those will have their own mechanism to they finish, literally finish the, there's a, probably a piece of paper on the wall That's somewhere right. 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 for each of them. Massachusetts, and we just got rid of the town crier. But <laughs> it would be another 150 years before posting it on the website will be accepted. Well, one of the charter schools I talked to actually said that they were able to meet it by just posting on the website, which I wasn't really sure how that would possibly be. Um, but they were. They, <laughs> they um, are in Springfield. So, I mean, then they were regional, so they only had one. Different than the guidance that I've received. Okay. Um, executive session, I put a uh, handout in the folder of the various uh, reasons for executive session. For this presentation, I focused on the reasons that we had brought into executive session versus the general open meeting law, which is designed to cover any and all public bodies in Massachusetts. So to enter open session, you have to first enter executive session. First, you have to meet, convene an open session. Second, you have to state the reason or reasons for executive session without compromising the purpose. Some of the reasons require that you be a little more specific that it would, holding an open session would be, would compromise the meeting. Um, you have to answer the question of whether you'll reconvene an open session, and then you need to take a roll call vote. It's pretty, pretty straightforward, we've done this enough time. In executive session, we have three responsibilities. One is to keep accurate records. We must take roll call votes for all, all votes taken in executive session. And the executive session can only cover the matters that have been identified in the public announcement. So we can't go into executive session to discuss labor relations and then have a discussion about purchasing property. Uh, and, uh, here's the reasons. You have it in front of you. But I pulled out in here. Uh, the ones I've started are the ones that you have the chair must state ahead of time that the discussion in open session would be detrimental. So, and these are particular ones that we have used or in fact we've been doing tonight. Preparing strategy for uh, litigation or collective bargaining. Right. Uh, other aspects of open L, open ML, open meeting law. An individual from the audience may not address it, may not address the board without permission from the chair of the public seat session. A meeting can be recorded by the attendees. And um, particular one of the things that open meeting law does allow, but we our bylaws do not, is remote participation. So a board member or a public body member must be physically present to participate in in the meeting. And that only covers the members of the board. So for example, we had the consultant from Carney Sandow gave us a remote presentation. That's fine. But we as board members, or in the case of a committee member, also applies to the committee member, also is applying to the exec ED search committee task force. And all those members must be participating in person if they are a member of the committee. Can somebody be in the audience live? Like, can it stream? Or could somebody have, like, a recording device? So, yes, it could be streamed. Yes, a member of the audience could have a recording device, as long as they're not disruptive to the per to the practice of the meeting, but they wouldn't be able to participate in public speech. Okay. They wouldn't be able to participate in public speech uh, at the discretion of the chair. Okay. They could record, and we could it is, well, many towns uh, broadcast their school committee meetings. Could we have remote participation, uh, remote listening in? <laughs> I mean, so not speaking. So, for example, you know, Craig's not here, here, Rick wasn't here. Could they be on the phone and listen in if they don't speak? Good question. I think the answer is yes. That okay. Just as, as, per, is yes. as per an audience member, that if they were look, watching remotely, they, they could. But the only reason why we have that, though, is because of our bylaws. Because, you know, in other board meetings, you can, you know, yeah, right. if somebody we, could listen because many are, are streamed live. So the fact that we listen and participation, if you just simply change your bylaws, because it's not an OML that permits right. Yeah, right. Um, a remote act. A remote. Yeah. In fact, it is for our proposal that we are planning to push forth in government is to 
propose the uh, OML, or propose the remote participation for meetings and guidance for that. There's very concrete and specific rules regarding when you can do remote participation. It's not just like feel like it. It's it's yeah, very like very specific rules. Like rule. in the aisles, you know, right. thing and your geography challenge. You're sick. But, we, but it is our goal, especially with the expanded board now of 13 people, that we see that remote participation could be a good thing. All right. Other questions? Four. Four of them. For a for the meeting, it's uh, uh, it's 50 percent plus one. So our current voting board is 12. 13. Ah, 13. What does quorum have to do with open meeting? Um, so, good question. So, first, the, the quorum of the board is seven right now. So, if we have seven people deliberating, let me go back to the first slide, uh, deliberating and communicating <coughs> in, of, of a matter of the board's jurisdiction, then it has to be done in open meeting. So, if three people are communicating. If three people, um, if three people are communicating and deliberating on something that's within the board's just jurisdiction, generally that's okay. As long as you don't daisy chain. Like, Chris, you and I talk, and then Chris, you talk to Mike, and Mike talks to Ev, and Ev talks to Allison, Allison talks to Pauline and Jessica, all about the same topic. That's, that, at that point, you, you're broken up with meeting law because there's supposed to be deliberating in public. Um, it, it also could, for committee, the, the public body, the public body doesn't just apply to this board meeting, it's any, any public body grouping of the board that's been assigned a particular task. So it applies to all committees. It typically applies to task force type things where the chair has assigned a group to take on a long-term responsibility. That's the area where things come out to me it's a little more, a little more gray on when a and when a smaller grouping is acting to make a decision versus researching a topic. Research is okay. Deliberating and making a decision for the full board is probably not okay. Can, maybe you just did this, but are you clarifying the difference between a task force and a committee? And if you didn't, can you? Um, I can't. Um, a committee is an officially defined body in our bylaws. It has official legal meaning as to what a committee is. A task force, is, our definition of task force is not a legal term. It's something that we have, it is something that we created, meaning general, which what we take it as a definition is less than the form of the board assigned to do a particular task. But there's no legal definition of what a task force is. The open meeting law just says that if you're a public body working on a matter in front of the board, then you would need to meet an open meeting. But is that something we want to do, Roger, maybe moving forward, to find what a task force is somewhere um, and make it for the purposes of research? Yeah, I'm working toward helping to define that, but it really is a one-off. Right. Because I'm trying to come up with some guidelines and, and working with the Yeah, but I think that for purposes for research is important. Yeah, you, you, can, you can group to to together and research a, research. Topic, research a topic and return with options. Yes. It's not deliberating. That is that. that well, that, it is deliberating in that you are working together, but you are not making a decision. You're not taking on a role that the full board could take on. Just information so, gathering. Information gathering. Sending out information to the board without discussion, those are fine because there's no community, there is no deliberation. So I can send out, uh, well, Pauline could have sent out the um, board uh, report, uh, the board climate survey report. As long as there was no discussion, that's purely communication. So I can send out the, min the minutes, again, without discussion, and we're fine. Can, can you clarify? When within the board we're emailing each other, if those are 
I know they're public in the sense that if somebody went and searched for them, like that we, we'd have to, I don't know, can you just talk, clarify like the emails? To is the question about whether like it's public? if it's public or not, yeah. Yes. Every email that we send between each other is public. I would defer to a lawyer to answer that question. Um, any, anything that, any, I can answer, how about, I can answer a slightly different question. Any document that we present at a board meeting, at a committee meeting, is a public document. So all of those are public documents. Anything that's documented in the executive session is, it, is also a public document, but it is held under, under, not under confidentiality until the event occurs that makes it no longer needing to be confidential. So uh, part of our goal is on the website to not only have, like this presentation will be on the website, um, any, all the documents that we put forth in today's meeting, we should, we're, our goal is to have not only the meeting minutes, but then the document one, two, three, four, all the documents we present. Um, if you send an email to me saying, Roger, what the what does this aspect of the meeting law mean? I can respond back to you personally. I don't believe that that would be a public document in my non-lawyer opinion. I'm pretty sure it is. I'm pretty sure that if you're acting in capacity uh, as a board member or something, um, it, it's a public document. Certainly anything that passes through our systems are all public documents. Except if they're related to any kind of ongoing litigation or collective bargaining or anything like that, that would be Protected. Yes, but then again, even then, you're just like by saying you're a lawyer, aren't they? Just um, they can still be um, retrieved. You just have to be redacted. So well, you work product or attorney or client. It would depend. Yeah. yeah. So, for example, you emailed the charter renewal thing or the results of the charter renewal, and like there's things in there like, can I go to all the teachers and say this was in this, or or I, I'm always scared that I'm going to do something on the board that I have confidential stuff and I'm going to tell people. Generally, the rule would be if it's not sent out by administration or by the board broadly, ready for dissemination, then it's probably not ready for dissemination. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. What about um, committees? So, um, with committees, we have committees that have board members and non board members. Um, so, quorum in a committee, is that only counting board members or board and non members? The quorum of the committee would be the members of, including non board members. Okay. So, as, as defined in, the, in our bylaws, the committee chair defines the members of the committee. So, we should actually, so do our committees actually include, you know, I don't know. So, like, like for example, <laughs> I, can suit the fund, I can suit the fundraising as non board members. Have, yeah, there are non board members. Yeah, we have, we, yeah. we have a lot of non board and they're officially on committee members. I have. Um, but are you saying, Roger, that, that a quorum is defined in the committee by the number of board members plus non board members? Is that how you have to hold the committee? Do you yes. have to have well, a quorum? For the, for the committee to meet as a committee, they would have to have a quorum of the committee. Of, commi of, of committee. the committee? Like, for example, that, there's, four member, there's four members on the fundraising, fundraising committee. Two people would have to be there. And it doesn't matter whether those are two three. board members or not, is what you're saying. Right. Could it just be the two? Could it uh, just three. be? Uh, three. 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 Sorry, I failed my math roll. Uh, so it, it the quorum is 50% plus one. So if you have a four member committee, you need three people there to do business. But remember, it could be all three non members. It could all be, if you had a committee with board one members. board member and three non-board members, three non-board members can get together and have a meeting. Okay. What, I'm sorry, like I feel at our committee we have some people who come all the time, but how do you know when someone's officially a member and somebody's just always there? Right? The, the, chair, the, the, chair, the chair is the chair. The chair of the committee chair. is, is the we, owner we of the members. We, we, the chair defines. Yeah, we, and we're, because we're, we're chair role. I'm sorry. Did you right. No, it's a good question. I, I think yeah. that um, this there was that one policy or process that I was beginning to 
Um, and it was very interesting during the poll to see that the top three that came out all were um, courses that had to do with global topics, global issues, current events. So certainly a craving for that. And current events came out way ahead. Um, so this is terrific. We're glad we're offering this new course. This elective will focus on major current events around the world. It will also offer global military history. The elective will focus on the great military leaders and most important battles of world history from ancient times to the present. And then finally, this third one, Global Traveler. The selective will introduce students to the history and the culture of nations. And the focus will be how and why is the world so diverse, and how and why is the world becoming more global. And this particular course may uh, end up tying into a global certificate program that we hope to be proposing um, um, in the near future. We have a task force. <laughs> Uh, there. Thank, so you. thank you for laughing, Chris. Uh, of uh, a committee of, uh, of uh, teachers and, uh, and students working on on um, designing a global certificate program for students. So that of course will likely be um, one of the requirements if you participate in that. There you have it. Those are our new courses. Are those one-year courses that they're being piloted, or are they? Um, well, I think we're, we're adding the mini course. It doesn't run. It just doesn't go. Then we would, you know, not continue it. The same way we have some courses that have been on the books for a while, but uh, again, we put the poll out. There's no interest, and um, you know, sometimes it's generated by student interest with, uh, as well as with the, the passions and talents of the educators who happen to have on staff at the time, which I think is what makes it exciting to get some some changes and some fresh ideas that are always trying to keep our curriculum. Are the teachers themselves, will they have to be trained for some of these courses, or they're bringing this as part of this already within their background? Yeah, so anything that was proposed is something because a teacher brought it forward because I have a passion for something and I want to teach. That's not to say that we won't provide and encourage people to get professional development, whether it's a brand new course or whether it's something they've been doing for a long time. Mm -hmm. You can tell by now I'm pretty passionate about making sure that people get PD and are able to always mm -hmm. you know, get their craft to be better and better. Yeah, that's great that there's, there's some courses that they like to teach. I think we have some math teacher that said, hmm, I really want to do art. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the board does have to approve this, um, this the curriculum generally so we do need a motion. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor of adopting the new the Ooh, new curriculum. Chris motions. Thank you, folks. Allison. Again, yeah, Allison second. We can take them all at once. We didn't have. Was that? We yeah, just yeah, yeah. Well, we voted yeah. all at once. Yeah. Package deal. Yeah. It's a yeah. yeah. package deal. Yeah. Right. Right. I guess if it was, if, if it's close, we can break it down. But it was not. So. All right. Um, fundraising and development committee updates. Uh, we met. We are um, by our March meeting, which is Monday. We will have a plan. For the annual campaign, which we're doing in the spring instead of the fall, which is what we're doing in the budget. Um, so it's going to be an April annual giving campaign themed off the, um, the, the faculty grant program that, that Dr. Mel just introduced. We also will have, we're kind of playing in the sandbox of corporate outreach, and each of us will be, help, will be reaching out to at least two corporations in the next few weeks, uh, looking for an array of ways to partners kind of how would you like to, how, how would you benefit from a relationship with you how would you benefit from us so not just fundraising but partnership cash is always in good taste but also partnership internships experiences in the real world okay. agenda request for the march meeting Administration on um, kind of recent history. How many 
how many of our students got here by lottery? And projecting out how many are going to be here by lottery. So I'm trying to get a handle on it. You mean these every day by lottery? No. Uh, siblings of current students are not. Oh, well, they, they, oh, they, they are lottery. too, yeah. but, are they? but they get the highest priority yeah. in lottery. It's still, it's still lottery. Yeah. Still lottery. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, then, then I need to get a clue on. My, what I want to have a better understanding of is how is our penetration of the core towns changing over time? Is that the uh, core town uh, students? Yes. Okay, Historically so that, and projected going forward. That, because I think that's something that we should be. Yeah, that enrollment data, don't we do that each um, this, this, this October, October and then February? It's in a schedule. We have it sort of on our board calendar with a schedule of when that report is supposed And normally I bring my digital government book with, with that schedule. Okay, I have a schedule like is regularly scheduled, we'll get it done. And if there's something you need before then, we can get you that done. Oh, it's we important but not urgent. That we, um, we will have, we have an updated enrollment policy that will be on the agenda actually for the next meeting. Um, you know, we decide whether or not so, you want to wrap, wrap that up. Yeah, at, it's, at, it's, you know, at a high level, what I'm looking for is how are we seeking to attract a student body that is representative of population So we actually do have to have a recruiting and retention policy, and so that's actually what Okay, and I mentioned the data behind that. So we can we the, 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 we're doing a presentation. Donald Campbell, who's our registrar, will be at the next meeting, anticipate to talk about the new enrollment policy. Okay, so it's time so now, that's great. That's number one, so that's that. The other thing I would mention, and I would say that you can do so, is uh, I'd like you to check out our website. If you go to our registration um, part now, We've, uh, we've added a new um, PowerPoint with voiceover that folks can go to and uh, learn about our policy because prior to that it was it's just the written policy, but it can be pretty confusing. But if you actually go in, you can uh, opt for the registrar. Yes, if you click on oh, that. Yes. Admissions process video. There you go. <laughs> and now you're able to click on that, and now you get a nice voiceover that kind of, especially for follow slides, it's a little bit less confusing than just reading the, yeah. the actual yeah. policy. So we were hopeful yeah. that would bring some, some clarification to the, the process. And the lottery did take place um, mm -hmm. just before the, the vacation break as well. Okay, so um, just in follow-up to Chris's question, we have a breakdown of like what percentage of the sophomore class is siblings of who, who came in because they were siblings? And then what percentage of the freshman class were the, who got their spot because they were siblings? Is that what you're asking for? Well, the question is about core towns versus non-core towns. The sibling question is going to answer that question. Look at, look at siblings of people from non-core towns. Try to project that on the other Projections. So what I'm, I'll, I'll try and write it down. I won't deliberate or anything. I promise. But you, know, you, know, you can deliberate your house, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. That's on the agenda. What else? Okay. Yeah. 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 Yes. Do we survey results? Uh, yes, we should. Have. We'll have we'll to do survey results. Um, okay. I also had annual goals. Yes, we've got the annual goals that um, we'll come up with. The other thing is, is that we have this, you know homework that we did for the last meeting and we talked about reviewing the information at the next meeting. We need to either do it in March or April, but which homework we've done? The we'll charter. Have to stuff from the charter. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so, put together. Yeah, yeah. 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 We, we kind of just shared yeah. in five minutes, but we didn't really talk about it. I'm sure we'll follow up and do that. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, that was, the, I, I left there thinking that we were going to talk about it. That's how we ended the conversation, or that's how you were. 
I think my understanding of that was that, that we were going to talk about it in the concept of strategic planning, basically a concept, not as a separate sort of action item on its own. That's how I was thinking about it anyway, so. I had it as a note or something like that. Because it, it, it's part of all, that whole, like, you know, clarify vision and, and mission and the strategic plan is, is getting addressed in those areas. Um, other agenda?